Hello and welcome back to Vet P and E. Yes, it's daylight now, and we're back in the shop. And we're going to dig a little bit deeper into the starter issue. So now, this is where we're up to at the moment. We pulled that cover off from the back, from here. We pulled that cover off. We took the cover off. For the clutch cable I've got to pull the cable out remove that and doo -doo -doo, let's see and I've got to pull the cover off here which is just them two Allen head bolts right there pop them off and then we'll be able to see the timing mark inside there so let me pull the clutch cable off let's see yeah, I have to pull the cable completely out. I'm doing this without a manual, so you'll just have to bear with me for a minute. But we'll be back in a little bit when I get a bit further in. It'll just be a few seconds for you, but it might be a fucking 30 minutes for me. <laughs> anyway, catch you And we are back. As you can see, we pulled the clutch cable and cable attachment off from here we have removed the cover off top of the mortar and I'll try and get in so you can see this it's got a little spigot here at the bottom looking at that I need to rotate the mortar 180 degrees because at the top I don't know if we can get in to see that Maybe if we get a flashlight. Let's see. At the top of there, roughly where that light's shining, there's a little mark. What we've got to line it up to. Right. About there where my finger is. You can see it? Right there. We got a line the top of the cylinder up with that mark right there with that little arrow that's on your cam gear right there so that needs to be marked at the top where that little mark is that I showed you and inside here you see there's a little mark on that in a diameter circle yeah little cut in it right there try and get so you can see it there you go we got a line the line with the T on the flywheel Let's see if we can get a light in there so you can see it somehow maybe On that flywheel that you can see just inside there, it'll be a little T. So, 22 milli socket goes through there and turn it clockwise. And we're just going to rotate it round till we get everything to line up right I've got to make sure that's lined up up here with the little mark up there and we've got to make sure the T is lined up on the flywheel so let me do that and then we'll come back to it okay we're back we've got it rotated around Try and get a light in it so you can see. That arrow at the top is now lined up with that mark up there. That's about it, you can see that mark this time. So we've got that lined up, we're at top dead centre on that cylinder. Here. There you may want some coffee. And inside here. There we go. 
There's the T on the flywheel, if you can see it. And there's a little line just before it. We've got that lined up with the mark and the notch in the cover right there. So hopefully you can see that. So we are actually bang on time. The marks on the timing chain and everything all lined up. So now we can remove this cover off here. I suggest getting a piece of cardboard because all these bolts are all different lengths. So I'll just kind of draw a map out on a piece of cardboard, you know, where each bolt goes. I'll probably start with these three, pull these three off, put them in the cardboard. Then we'll start working our way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like ten. Ten, maybe thirteen bolts that we need to pull off. So I've got to get a piece of paper and map out a rough shape of what this cover is going to be. And we'll pull all them bolts out and put them in the corresponding holes that they need to go into. So. We'll do that and then I'll come back and just... We've got all the bolts out. The three from the inside and then I'll work my way all the way around to the start again. And if I can get you to see this, the reason why we're doing this, putting them all in that order on a piece of paper or cardboard, whatever you've got laying around, it's because every single bolt is a different size different in length so you want to put them back in the same order that you took them out so now i know they're going to be safe i know exactly where they go when i put it all back together you know it's just going to be the easiest way to do it and this probably have to tap it and break it free because i don't see any more bolts holding it in place anywhere every single one of them's out we just need to crack the cover and pull it off so i'll do that and then we'll come back to it be back in just a second and there we have it we have the cover off it there's your idler gear that's fallen off because the shaft pulls out of it make note you got a little shim on the shaft here you don't want to lose that. There it is. I've found it on this one. It's stuck to my cover. So we'll put that back on there. Like I said, you got a little bit of a shim. Goes on this shaft here, so we don't want to lose that. I'll put it back on that shaft, that way we know where it's at. I'm going to rig up a piece of wire. Probably going to put a bolt back in there. Tie a wire to it. That way I'm pointing to my top dead centre on the flywheel. As you can see that. you got an F. And then the T. Right there. We want to set it. That way I know when I pull that nut off, my flywheel's not moved anywhere, and we should be good. Because I know we didn't move that anywhere, it's just, we've got to lock the flywheel in that, so I can get this nut off, get my puller out, pull the flywheel off, and then we can get to the fucking goddamn starter clutch that's solid at the back so somewhere I've got to find a way of locking I'll probably end up getting a strap wrench put it on the flywheel hold it while I break that nut free and then pull it off that way maybe but yeah there's your starter gear right there your idler gear Looks like I've got a new one of these anyway. 
big cub goes to the back. And the new one, where the shaft just pulls out of the gear, like I said, that goes in there. Whereas that shaft pulls out, the new one actually runs on like a needle bearing setup. There's a needle bearing that fits in the back of the motor behind that gear. And the other half fits inside where that goes here. And then the new gears with the shaft, the shaft is already solid with the gears. So it make it a lot easier when I put it all back together. I might have to run to the hardware store, find some screws to fit that so I can pull it off. But hey, it's all part of, you know, one step at a time. We'll get it done. Like I say, it's a pain in the ass to do. But we are getting into it. And uh, the clutch, the starter clutch, is right behind here, fastened to the flywheel. So. Like I said, you've got to pull the flywheel off to get to it. But, you know, like I say, it's one step at a time. We're just getting slowly, one step at a time. You don't want to lose your dowels. There should be one there, so that's probably pulled off. Yeah. That one came off with the cover, so as long as you don't lose them, your cover's going to go back in the right position. We've got new gaskets and everything. We've got to pull all, clean it all up, put new gasket on it, and you know, the way it goes. You know what fucking happens when you're dealing with gaskets and shit. It just fucking shit's just peeling off. I'll have to clean all this up. I've got new gasket in the kit to put on anyway, and these dowels will also help hold the gasket in place while you get everything lined up. But overall, inside, we're not looking too bad actually. There's no metal shavings, grit or anything in there that I can feel. So we should be okay. Like I say, the main point, don't lose that shim that I showed you and put on that shaft. We don't want to lose that. Because if you put that on the wrong shaft over here, you'll end up having to do your starter clutch yet again. Just make sure you put it on the gear shaft, not the idler pulley shaft. So anyway, I'll probably put a screw maybe here, put some wire around it so we're coming out above the T so I know that my flywheel, I'll have a mark for my flywheel because, you know, I've not got any way of marking it anywhere else to show me where my exact position is, so I'll rig up a piece of wire or something just to, you know, sit above, pointing where my line is. That way I don't move my flywheel where it's not supposed to be. And because I don't know if it'll go back in the same spot, whether it's on a keyway or what it is until I get into it, so. I'd rather be safe and know where it goes and have a mark where I can sit it and line it up later on. So, anyway, we'll come back to it in a minute. Catch you soon. Everybody. And we are back. As you can see, I've got me a mark rigged up. I just zip tied a piece of straw. And that'll give me an idea of where my flywheel's position is going to be. As long as I don't move that, you know, it'll just give me an idea. That's all it is, is just to mark it. Just give me an idea of the position of it. But, you know, one thing at a time. Now we've got to figure out a way to lock it all in place. That way. See, we've got, we'll have to probably put a dowel in that gear, maybe. I think there's two there. I'll lock it, put a dowel in it, you know, lock it in position so it don't move anywhere. 
think we've got a hole here. We've got a hole there. Hopefully it's not going to move when I undo that nut. So we'll come back in a minute and we'll see what happens. Catch you in a minute. Okay. As you can see we're marked up with that line there. Now the gear at the back, there's a hole in it. Try and break that gasket away so you can see it a little better. There's a hole in the back of the what I did, I wedged a screwdriver, uh, Allen wrench in there to stop it from moving. I think it was about five, five and a half millimeter and you're able to break your nut off, your flywheel. So we'll pull that off. See, nut comes off. Put that in a safe spot out of the way. Now, I've got to find my flywheel puller and pull the flywheel off. So give me a few minutes. I'll have to dig that out wherever it's at. And hopefully I've got three screws that'll fit them holes. If not, I'm going to have to run to the store and I've got to try and figure out what size they are. So I know they're bigger than what we took out from here so we're gonna have to go bigger than that probably looks like eight maybe eight millimeter maybe so we'll see anyway we're that far into it so like I say it's not a hot it's a tricky job but you know if you're confident in what you're doing you know it shouldn't be a problem it's only a two stroke uh, four stroke motor you know V twin it's not like when I had to do the timing chain on the Durango and all that lot we're a lot more into it doing that but yeah. so far it's been pretty simple to get into and all that lot I'm hoping this step-by-step -step guide will help you out if you have to do it yourself and you know that's what we're here for I'm trying to get something on YouTube so everybody knows how to do it themselves instead of paying mechanical garages and all that lot you know the money out of the pocket it's something simple and you know you'd be able to do it yourself I'm just here trying to help you everybody so you know we'll catch you in a little bit I've got to see me flywheel puller next time you see me hopefully this flywheel is going to be off but you know it is what it is Hopefully it's not going to give me any trouble, but you never know. Catch you soon, everybody. Bye-bye.